how do we get to this place into production? Well, we get some local help from our NRCS and SWCDs. They help us in uh, getting our place laid out. Then by attending MIG field days, this is a great place for you to learn and swap ideas with others. Then the other thing is to adopt a can-do attitude. Visiting with these MIG producers, you're able to exchange ideas. Subscribe to the Stockman Grass Farmer magazine. It has great reading and great things that people are doing. And then your fence. Now, remember, this is not a new idea. And don't listen to it. It won't work. Remember, many out there want you to fail. Then they can say, I told you so. I told you all along that it wouldn't work. Next slide. Start slow and easy. Visit with mid grazers that have 10 or more years of experience. Start carefully and use what is available. Purchase a good charger, one wire, move cattle for grazing, rest and rotation. Locate a producer that is using clover in their operation, not a salesman. It's important not to plow up all of the existing sod and plant and introduce grass. It may be possible with the introduction of a legume to supplement an existing forage and provide good grazing with high protein without even having to introduce other forages. Next slide. This is the vision of success here. These cattle with the head down, dizzy grazing. The grass is not tall, but it's high and it's very palpable, and they can make the best use of it. Next slide. Here is the vision of success on 80 acres of clover, tetrapod, and Marshall ryegrass. It has been growing without seeding now for 17 years. They are grazing here on November the 16th, coming out of drought conditions that over for a three-year period. This grazing is being afforded with no seeding, no fertilizing, and no breaking. Now, the monetary value for this, not having to break and seed and fertilize, is approximately $150, $200 an acre now. With management, this saves from eight to $15,000 a year. Then you also have additional savings in hay and supplement that you're not having to feed. Next slide. Here we have a great saying. Go as far as you can see. When you get there, you will be able to see farther. This is a quote by Zig Ziglar. Next slide. Form a partnership with Mother Nature in producing the best and most profitable livestock following these rules. Soil will not wear out in grass. The longer it is used, the better it will become. Do not try to produce on poor land without lime, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. It will not pay. Management is the secret of keeping good pastures excellent. It will not pay to fertilize and seed if you don't manage to get the most from your work and investment. Next slide. With beef cows, winter makes up 71% of total out-of-pocket expenses. Each day you do not supplemental feed is money in your pocket. Begin soil improvement before herd improvement. Most everyone does that the backwards. They start herd improvement before they start soil improvement. Soil test to establish need for fertility. Plant by seeding on top of the ground and let am animals trample the seed into the ground. Eliminate need for large equipment and seed bed preparation after initial planting. With MIG, the fencing functions as a sprayer and the mower and the livestock, in effect, are the herbicide. Next slide. Here you see the paddock systems and the rope across from one paddock to the other, and that rope is electrified. Next slide. Here you see that we're measuring the clover. This is long in December. 
and it's already up to a height of seven, eight inches tall here, and it had already been glazed some. Next slide. Here's another measurement of it. You see that the clover is very thick and has a good stand of it, has a good color, and it's ready to kick off and start growing. Next slide. Here you can see that in the uh, nearest to it, the forage is good color of green. As you look in the background there, you can see that that has been grazed back there, and you can see that the blooms on the clover is already blooming there. Next slide. Okay, you're looking at clover here that's up in December here in our, we're not in East Texas, we're not in South Texas, nor Central Texas. We're just kind of over, away from A&M, about 18 miles is our location. So you're seeing clover that's growing here that has come up voluntarily for the last, uh, been coming up now for about 20, 21 years without reseeding, along with the touch pollen and Marshall ryegrass. Next slide. Here we have a, a picture of the clover that has been grazed, and also what we're showing here is a subsoiling that we have done earlier in there, and this is uh, subsoiling, pulling it down, breaking the sod or the clay pan there about 16, 18 inches deep, and we do that on about a 20-foot uh, spacing there, and we're calling that the subsoiling. Next slide. Here the cattle, you can see that the grass is picking up here, and this is going to be up in late December and early part of January. Uh, the cattle are still holding their condition. They could use more forage, but uh, that's all that we have to offer them at now, and they don't have the opportunity to feed out of the feed sack. Next slide. Uh, you see here they're looking to say, okay, boss, why not move into another paddock? We'd like to get one that's a little bit taller. Next slide. Here we have uh, a good shot of the manure that these cattle are uh, excreting here. You notice that it is stacking up. It's not lumpy or anything else. It runs out with a thick consistency here, and they're getting all the protein that they need and all the good uh, nutrients that's here for them. So this is uh, a good balance of the forage and what it can do there for the cattle. They'll even make a weight gain on that if we can get additional uh, amount, volume of forage. Next slide. 